How are we doing, Thrivers? Today we are going to tackle the topic, how do you heal from narcissistic abuse? I think we can all agree there is no shortage of channels with information on the narcissist. And given all these channels and all the information out there, I'd be willing to guess that you would consider yourself a walking encyclopedia. In fact, I bet there's times you're out when you can't wait for there to be a conversation about narcissists. You can jump in with all of your expertise. And that's great. We need to know what we're dealing with in order to not have to deal with it anymore. But it's a whole different thing to talk about the healing process. But there is that one consistent message, do the work. And that may lead one to ask themselves, I want to recover from this abuse. I understand that it's rewired my brain. I know that it's programmed me to have self-limiting beliefs. I know that it's programmed me to engage in self-sabotage. I know that I engage in negative self-talk. I have codependency. I suck with a narcissist much longer than I needed to. I'm so ruminating about the narcissist. I want to move on with my life. I understand that this person is not the person I thought they were. I really just want to do the work. I just don't know what the work is. Well, we're going to help you today. So in this video, we're going to talk about not all, but four important factors or activities you should engage in as part of healing. And we're also going to talk about the fundamental tool that Thrive the Matrix uses to make sure that you are doing the work and healing from this type of abuse. And we have a free offer, so you're going to want to wait till the end of the video to know how you can capitalize on it and start doing the work today. In the meantime, we do have a new format for our disclaimer. We do have chapter markers in place. Feel free to skip it if you'd like. If you are new to the channel, I would definitely suggest viewing it. Take about a minute and a half of your time and then we'll dive right in. We would like to begin today by thanking our Thriver Medallion members, our subscribers and early adopters, anyone revisiting this channel, having watched previous content, and brand new viewers. We hope you enjoyed today's content and this announcement was made especially for you. Before we begin, if you want to bypass this announcement, if you've already heard it, please use the channel marker function in YouTube to do so. With that, I'll begin by saying that any persons or scenarios discussed on this channel are not based on any specific real persons or scenarios and are anecdotal only. I am not a clinician. I am not a psychologist, psychiatrist, therapist, although I am a certified professional in life and happiness coach. And for that reason on this channel, we always theorize we do not have the right to diagnose and we will absolutely never theranose. With that, we'd ask you to remain seated until the end of the video. We do strive to make them short and to the point and valuable in respect for your time, especially when the stick around sign is illuminated. We also end each video with an audio uplift outro to make sure you leave on a positive note and you're certainly not gonna wanna miss that. For most of the content on this channel, it's important to note you may only be able to assist yourself and you'll likely want to always assist yourself before assisting others. In the likely case of an emergency because life is not fair, please know that you always have an exit using the resources and tools you'll develop on this channel and others like it. With that, we are expecting clear skies today and wish that for you every day regardless of what the weather says. And I would invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy today's topic. Thank you so much. If you watch that brief announcement, I was evaluating some of my older videos and I'm working on it, but I noticed sometimes I can be monotone. It almost reminded me of a flight attendant. So I had the great idea of putting my usually disclaimers, which I really like to say, but now I won't have to because I can just insert that in the videos. Uh, I thought about presenting them as if you were getting them from a flight attendant. So if you're one of those people on a plane that likes the safety announcements, I'm one of them then you can count on that in these videos. It's important you know our qualifications and the support and help you can expect from Thrive the Matrix and our videos. With that, I wanted to get into the four tactics or techniques to make a strong start on your healing journey. They're not all inclusive and there are many more, but it's a strong start. And after that, we are going to discuss how you can use the description to access a free resource, our fundamental resource for doing the work and start doing the work on one of these tactics today. So the first one is getting some distance. So you may have watched another channel suggestions and even this channel suggestions to go no contact. That's not always possible when it's not. Gray rock has been offered as a technique. Really 
that amounts to walking a hiking trail and just being a gray rock alongside the trail that's barely noticed, right? Your answers are very perfunctory, very brief, very to the point. I try to take a statement and break out fact from abuse, right? So when a toxic person or a controller says something, they may state a fact, but then follow it with some abuse. Disregard the abuse and respond to the fact. Aside from the gray rock technique, it is also important for you to actually get physical uh, distance between you and the abuser or abusers. And that can be really hard, especially if we go with the scenario of cohabitating with them. Maybe you know, you're working a job and contributing to the household bills. They're not someone you can avoid on a daily basis. That doesn't mean that you can't get some distance. Think about it this way. It's really hard to heal. It's really hard to get perspective. It's really hard to think about what is happening to you. And organizing it in the, your mind in such a way that you can approach healing if you're in the midst of experiencing it. It's almost like evaluating the effectiveness of a battle strategy in the middle of the battle itself. It just doesn't work. So if you're in that situation, it could just mean setting aside a day for yourself where that phone is, is silenced and, and you're doing something you enjoy or working on your healing activities, including the ones we're discussing today, or just doing something that gets you reconnected to yourself or something that helps you find out who you really are if you've never connected to begin with. Uh, but one way or another, you're going to want to get as far away as possible for as long as possible, and that can change depending on your scenario. You're also going to most likely have to defend that distance, so the abusers or controllers in your life are going to notice that you are distancing yourself, even if for a short while. So it's important to practice scripts you can use to, again, respond to facts, not abuse, and not explain yourself, but hold your ground and, and make sure that you're confident about taking the, the space and the distance that you're entitled to and that you need to start the healing process. Uh, the second tip that I would have would be to find ways to validate your experience. And I think this is fundamental only because the whole point of the experience is invalidation. So you've heard about gaslighting, projection, deflection, DARVO. Anything these people can do to take their fragile egos, toxic shame, toxic emotional junk and dump it on you, they will. And they do it in ways that are both overt and subtle, as you've learned. You know, it's meant to confuse you. It's meant to make you think maybe you're too sensitive. It's meant to make you think that this really isn't happening. It's meant to make you think this is everyone's experience. And I can offer you one suggestion for validating your experience. Uh, take it, you know, for what it's worth, and hopefully you have a few people in your life that you can trust. You know, whether it's extended family members that you know can keep things confidential that you've talked to before, whether it's trusted friends, whether it's a coworker that you know you can trust. That's a caveat. You know you can trust. <laughs> I would uh, have boundaries as far as what type of information you're willing to share with folks until you know that uh, there are people you can trust. But in any event. You know, you don't have to tell them exactly what happened and with who. You can make it a hypothetical and just say, hey, you know, suppose Y happened with X. So what would you have done in that situation? Or if X happened with Y person, what would, how would you have reacted? If three or four of those people are giving you the same answers as how you reacted or thought you should have reacted or what you thought was appropriate, chances are then that validates your experience. That could be a very useful tool. Um, Set boundaries first. Designate who those people are going to be and ask them if they mind if you do that from time to time. Most of them won't. And you don't have to get specific about who you're talking about. Just give them the general scenario. And if what they would do, then you consider them healthy adults aligns with what you did or thought you should do, then you're on the right track. You can also use it to validate what's happening to you and, and how those folks would feel if it was happening to them to validate the feelings as well. Third, I would say just don't personalize, and it takes some work not to do this, but if you can wrap your head around the concept that this really isn't about you, you might have just been the nearest and dearest, closest and most available, uh, the most empathetic, the most easy to manipulate, and most empathetic is and most easy to manipulate to me are compliments. You might not think the latter is, but someone who's easy to manipulate is someone that doesn't manipulate or doesn't think of manipulation as even a tool in their toolbox and how to, to relate to people. So if you're easy to manipulate, don't get too down on yourself. It just means that that's not how you do life. And, uh, and that's a good thing. But as soon as you realize that they would be doing this toxic junk to 
anyone that w was the richest source for the satisfaction they get from unloading their baggage onto someone else. It doesn't matter that it was you and what they're saying and what they're doing. It's not indicative of who you are, your identity, your authentic self, your interests, your value, your worth. You are enough. It's, it takes some work to know that. But if you can start to realize that they probably treat many other people just as badly. But if you can start realizing that it's not about you and it's not indicative of anything personal about you, it makes it a lot easier to endure, for lack of a better word. Uh, you may not be able to get away from it at all times. And when you don't personalize, it kind of goes in one ear and out the other. The controller, the narcissist, they may see that. They may dilute their efforts, might even help them tamp that down a little bit. No guarantees on that. Finally, and this probably should have been first. People think of it as the first step. I actually think the first three are easier. This one's tough. It's just so heavy. And I think that's practicing radical acceptance. And that means that these people are never going to change. So if they're family members, they're going to be family members in your life for the rest of your life and the rest of theirs that aren't going to change. Uh, if there's someone you love in a relationship, you feel like you can't go on unless something changes, then it probably won't go on because they probably won't change. Folks with these behavior patterns or these disorders are less likely to get therapy for them thinking that they're living the right way. And anyone that thinks they're living the right way, including ourselves, probably wouldn't seek out therapy unless we don't get better. That radical acceptance that the world isn't going to change around you, you have to change around it. And the only thing you can control is the way you engage with these controllers, the way that you respond, the way that you're affected, uh, the way that you want to go about obtaining your life that's well-deserved of happiness, freedom, and peace. That's a tough pill to swallow. You're never going to have your day in the sun, most likely never have that day where someone finally tells you you're right. Hopefully along the way you'll be believed. You definitely deserve to be. But... I don't think you'll be vindicated by these toxic persons. If they could admit that they had these behaviors, they wouldn't have them to begin with. I would hope you're enough not to have these behaviors and, and you're not. When you finally acknowledge that and it sinks in, expect to grieve. And if you've ever lost a loved one, maybe you know what grieving is like. I think we grieve a lot more than just people in our lives that we've lost. Not least of which people in our lives that we're probably going to lose that are going to still be alive. That's that's grief, okay? And that's a that's a whole another process for a whole another video. Uh, but it's still something you may want to start practicing. Start wrapping your head around the fact that it's not going to benefit you to go up and point out the behaviors, and they're not going to all of a sudden say, "Huh, you got a point there. Let's sit down and talk about it." Now to that resource I mentioned. The fundamental tool we use at Thrive the Matrix for making sure we do the work are called Thriver Sizes, just like when you're looking to lose weight, get in better shape, eat healthier, uh, get healthier physically. Typically, you exercise. Our mental exercises are called Thriver Sizes, especially when it comes to this topic. And so we're offering a free th Thriver Size on our website. There's a link in the description. And in this one, you're going to practice the first skill that we talked about, which is getting some distance. So you're going to be presented with a scenario where there's an abusive statement. We're going to have colored prompts to show you fact from abuse and give you an example of a way that you can just respond to the fact, not the abuse, and then give you a scenario and challenge you to do the same. Uh, from there, the second part of the activity is going to give you one suggestion if you're in that situation I mentioned where you're cohabitating. To get some distance, you can get some perspective and start to think about how you're going to go about this whole business of healing. Uh, you're going to be asked to brainstorm up to, I think, five different ways that you can get distance in your life on a regular basis, which is definitely needed to heal. And expect some resistance when you, when you exert your right to have or take this distance. In acknowledgement of that, the Thriver Size is also going to ask you to brainstorm some scripts that you can use to protect your fundamental right to your time, to your distance. You're entitled to take some time away, to get away, far away, as far away as you can for as long as you can, even if that's for four hours and it's a matter of 10 miles and you sit in the parking lot. Um, it's different for everybody, but you are going to get pushed back for it. You're going to need to know how to respond. And it's just more gray rocking in a different context. You get some practice with that too. So definitely check out the description, visit the website. I am just getting into the business of life coaching. I would love to meet with some of you virtually one-on-one -on -one to go over your work. It's free. 
just visit the scheduler on the Thrive the Matrix website, set up your Meet the Matrix consultation. We'll get on a call virtually. You can share your work from the Thriver size. We can talk about what you can expect from future videos and additional Thriver sizes to practice the other three skills to healing that uh, we talked about today. So if you join this video asking yourself, what is the work? How do I do the work? Hope you know that we offer Thriver sizes to help you do that, tangibly do that, and measure that you're doing that so you can be at peace that you're finally doing the work. Until our next topic, Thrivers, stay up.